is right now the director of Honghai uh, Fushkong Quantum Computing uh, Research Center in Taiwan. He was an associate professor at Center for Quantum Software and Information at University of Technology, Sydney, Australia. And way before that, uh, he uh, re received his PhD from uh, University of Southern California and spending uh, time working as postdoc in Cambridge University and uh, Japan Science and Technology Agency. So Professor Xie is a quantum information theorist, but he also have uh, a lot of work in for both on the particle uh, implementation for quantum machine learning. So uh, for today, he will give a talk uh, for quantum machine learning and its application uh, toward robustness and privacy. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Xie. Um, okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me. Uh, this is Ming Xu Xie from Honghai Quantum Computing Research Center. And the title of today's talk is Quantum Machine Learning Toward Robustness and Privacy. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to introduce two less noticed questions in quantum machine learning research. Uh, let me begin with this high level question. Uh, why do we care about quantum computing? Does it provide any fundamental change to the conventional computational model? To answer this question, let me start with this famous Turing machine. A Turing machine consists of a long tab, a reading, um, a re uh, a reading head that could move to the left or to the right, a list of instructions, and a state registers. The machine carry out computation, in other words, uses specific instructions based on the symbol from the tab and the machine's current state. And then the machine updates the symbol in the cell and moves the tab to the left or to the right. It turns out that this abstract model of computation include most of the realistic computation, uh, computing devices. What this means is that the Turing machine could simulate those realistic computing models up to polynomial overhead. A famous strong church Turing hypothesis claims that every realistic computing model could always be efficiently simulated by the Turing machine. However, it is now widely believed that quantum, com uh, quantum computers or quantum computings would disprove this hypothesis. And this really excites the whole research communi communities. Specifically, with quantum computers or quantum Turing machines, it is likely that new complexity classes could be introduced other than the well-known complexity class, uh, classes plotted in gray colors. Let me start the famous complexity class P. Roughly, uh, this, this uh, small circle here, um, roughly the class contains all the decision problems that could be solved by a deterministic Turing machine in polynomial time. If we allowed the deterministic Turing machine to only output the solution with bounded error probability, then it becomes uh, this complexity class BPP. Essentially, BPP consists consists of all the problems that could be efficiently solved by classical machines. Now, we also have the class MP, the bigger one here, that con contains the decision problems that could only be efficiently verified instead of being efficiently computable. Notice that whether P equal MP uh, remains open up to this point, however, most researchers believe that they are not equal because we have strong evidence of, for that. Now, with quantum Turing machine, namely quantum computers, 
we can define a new complexity class called BQP, the purple, uh, the purple circle here, that contains all the problems that can be efficiently solved by a quantum Turing machine with bounded error. BQP strictly contains BPP by definition because quantum computers include classical computers as a special case or quantum mechanics includes classical mechanics as a special case. We could also define uh, a quantum generalization of NP. So that's this orange circle that we call QMA. Problems in QMA could not even be efficiently solved if we have a quantum computer. From here, we could see that quantum computers have its own limitations. It cannot solve all the problems magically. It is also believed that BQP, the purple circle, might be strictly larger than BPP. There has been strong evidence supporting this belief. The prime number factorization problem stands as a prominent example. There is a polynomial time quantum algorithm invented by Peter Shore to determine whether a number is a prime number or not. However, after several decades of research, the best classical algorithm is uh, for prime number factorization is still suboptimal, uh, sorry, sub-exponential. There are other examples such as computing Jones polynomial to certain root of unity that are prove, proven to be in VQP. However, there are, however, no efficient classical algorithm for solving Jones polynomial up to now. So this example show, provides strong evidence that BQP is strictly larger than BPP. From a slightly different uh, perspective, it is clear that simulating the dynamics of a quantum computer is extremely resource consuming due to the existence of superposition states, it takes exponential amount of memory to store the amplitude information. And it also takes exponential amount of time to conduct a simulation of, uh, of a quantum system evolution. A somehow updated resource estimation in this figure indicate simulating a 20 cycle circuit computation on a 50 qubit quantum devices take around 10,000 years. Of course, this, this number comes, uh, is, is, uh, comes from an estimation from 2019. And right now there are more efficient classical simulation methods. However, it is rather obvious that exact classical simulation of quantum, uh, of quantum uh, evolution, we are doomed to be fa failed after hundreds of qubits. On the right hand side here shows several current prototypical quantum devices. The three mainstream hardware platforms are trap ions, um, uh, superconducting. Uh, quantum devices and optical quantum computers. These are the leading platforms in, uh, in, in quantum computers. So one of the biggest challenges in building a quantum computer is how to um, reduce the noise. Let me quickly show you a comparison of the error rates between classical and current quantum devices. The error rate in crash conversion is very low. Even in 2009, there was only one soft error in a 120 megabyte SD RAM in six months. The soft error here uh, normally caused by cosmic rays instead of operating errors. Roughly, the error rate could be as small as 10 to the minus 10 to 10 to the minus 15 under current classical hardware many, many, uh, many manufacturing technique. On the other hand, the error rate, here I refer to the T2 times, 
So, uh, but T2 time is, uh, it means that uh, the time for a superposed quantum state to be decohered to a classical state. The T2 time can be the order of one per second or even one per millisecond. So you can see that the quantum computers require frequent error correction in between the computation steps because the error rate is very high. So current quantum device did not equip with error correction mechanism yet. However, um, hence the result output by these quantum devices are pretty noisy. Now let's fast forward to the field of quantum machine learning. It has become one of the hottest topic in quantum computing in recent years. There was even a review article published by the Nature Magazine in 2017. Almost all of the classical machine learning ideas could be generalized to the quantum domain as illustrated by this table from the review article. There are quantum machine learning algorithms based on the Bayesian inference. There are quantum algorithms for perceptrons, for principal component analysis, and SVN. And you can also see that that's a quantum generalization of Boltzmann machine. And, they, and of course, there are much more such results generated after 2017. So I have mentioned in a few slides back that quantum computers on all quantum circuits are full of noise. Same holds true for quantum learning machines. Other than designing error mitigation or error correction techniques, I think one of the very interesting questions is as follows. Could noise become useful in quantum machine learnings? And of course, based on the title of my talk today, you can imagine that the answer is going to be yes. We do provide examples that noise could become useful in tasks of machine learning in the following. So specifically, in today's talk, I'm going to show you two examples of quantum noise that could help to improve privacy and the others for increasing the robust, robustness. I would like to thank my uh, co-supervised student, Yu Shendu, and my collaborators from Sinning and Nana Liu from uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong Universities for their wonderful work. And you can see the, the reference here. Okay, so let's move, let's start with the first set of results, namely how noise could improve private, uh, privacy of quantum machine learning tasks. Before that, let me motivate the importance of the privacy issues in today's society. Text, for example, your health records, your bank data, even your online browsing records, your traveling route, etc. These informations were collected by unwanted third parties any minute you surf on the internet without your permission. How to prevent this has become a significant issue. So how to deal with the private issues has become a central topic in machine learning. Addressing the private issue in machine learning evolved into an important subfield called private learning. Given a data set where either people's financial or medical data was stored, the learning algorithms or learning agent should only output the, the targeted information and should not leak the unwanted information related to specific entry in the data set. This is a rather tricky question. It happens very frequently that a learning algorithm could be exploited and sensitive information could be leaked to an adversary or third party without knowing. The goal of private learning is to design privacy mechanism to prevent this from happening. The legitimacy of the proposed quantum algorithms will be questioned if they could not guarantee privacy. So how do we uh, design a privacy mechanism in machine learning? 
this is a this is still an ongoing and very, very active research area. However, it is well known that a simple strategy that is just adding noise would suffice. The first few steps are the same as usual machine learning algorithms. However, instead of direct outputting the result, the algorithms or the privacy guard add certain disturbance to the outcome. This is essentially the idea behind the differential pri private mechanisms. Of course, there is a formal definition of what a differential privacy should be. However, in this talk, I will not go into the mathematical definitions. All one needs to remember is that the differential privacy requires that the output of, a, of an algorithm should not change when two data sets are closed. So classical uh, different, differential uh, privacy is now well studied and a variety of machine learning algorithms with differential privacy has been implemented. However, quantum differential privacy is not. It is only very little exploited by now. The corresponding concept of differential privacy in quantum computation was only introduced in this paper in 2017. The definition of quantum differential privacy mimics the definition of classical differential privacy. However, the quantum definition has to incorporate the quantum component of measurement in your algorithms. This is the, uh, the only difference in their definition. The other, the second reference, the, uh, the other more significant result is this second reference by Scott Aronson and Gil Rosburn, where they applied classical result on differential privacy to study the quantum task of shadow thermography. However, there is not a quantum machine algorithm that equipped with differential pri pri privacy mechanism prior to 2020. To the best of my knowledge, one of the first quantum algorithms equipped with differential privacy properties and quantum machine learning is the result that I'm going to introduce. So why is there a little result in quantum machine learning algorithm with differential privacy? One of the reasons is of course, quantum machine learning is a very young research area and there are more e emerging questions to be explored, such as how to overcome the barren plateau issues in the training phases, or how much advantage could a quantum machine learning give you? On the other hand, if you think of, if you think deeper, there seems a dilemma in quantum private learning. First of all, in the classical private learning, one includes the additional step to implement the privacy mechanism. The time complexity of a private learning algorithm is usually not the quantity one is hoping to improve. However, when we consider uh, quantum machine learning, the top priorities is always to improve the efficiency of the classical machine learning task. So the challenge is how to design a quantum differential private algorithm with better runtime and the same, at least the same privacy guaranteed. This is of course not trivial because like I said, additional step to implement the privacy mechanism we are worse than the wrong time. To demonstrate that noise could be used as privacy mechanism in quantum machine learning, we consider the well study problems of linear regression. This plot here on the right hand side illustrated the basic idea of linear regression. Given a set of data points in n dimensional space and that the size of the data set be d, in other words, the matrix X here is of n by d 
and the vector here is an n by one column vector. The goal of linear regression is to find a d by one vector in the parameter space to minimize the difference uh, between x theta minus y in the L2 norm. In addition to this task, we also require that the algorithm possesses the differential private properties. In other words, the algorithm should, should be insensitive to the change of the indices between the data set. So there is a popular uh, algorithm for the linear regression problems, namely the Lasso estimators. What the Lasso estimators does consists of the following two major steps. The first steps here, the first one, the first two lines, um, it chooses a basic vector in your parameter space whose gradient is minima in, in, uh, in certain uh, basics. Then it updates the parameter space by moving along so, uh, this parameter space theta. So it updates the parameter vector by moving along the basics uh, uh, with this amount mu t. So basically these are the two steps uh, for the lasso estimators. To include the differential private mechanisms, we can add a Laplace, Laplacian noise to this quantity alpha s. These additional steps could preserve the differential private with respect to any changes of the, uh, the indices in your input, uh, input pair, xi, yi. The benchmark we consider for the performance of regression algorithm is the utility measure IL defined here. So it, it is defined to be the difference between the average lost and the minimum lost. It is shown in this paper by Tawo et al. in 2015, it's also a very recent result, that the utility bound of the private lasso estimators is almost the same as the non-private lasso estimators. And you can see that the difference is only of logarith logarithmic in N. So you have you see a, a big O tier the annotation here. And if you analyze the runtime of this differential private lasso estimators, the time complexity is of order n times d squared. So remember that uh, d is the uh, dimension of your parameter space. Of course, that this this is higher than the Lasso estimator without the differential private because adding privacy mechanism re requires uh, additional steps, but the, the utility bound is the same. Now, let me uh, introduce our result summarized in this table. In this table, uh, in this paper that we put on archive in July 2020, we construct the first quantum algorithm with differential private mechanism for, uh, for the linear regression problems. Um, the first column here illustrated the classical lower bound on the runtime of optimal non-private Lasso estimators. The second columns here display the best runtime and utility bound of classical differential uh, private Lasso estimators. So basically you can see that this result is from uh, the 2015 paper that I mentioned in the previous slide. The third column illustrated the quantum lower bounds on the runtimes of optimal non-private Lasso estimators. And then the fourth column uh, is our generalization of, uh, is the content generalization of classical non-private Lasso estimators. Uh, and uh, we can, uh, in, in our uh, non-private quantum algorithm, the runtime efficient, uh, uh, the, the runtime is of O up to square root of N times D. Finally, um, we could uh, include the differential private mechanism in our uh, non-private Lasso 
to obtain the first quantum uh, differential uh, private uh, algorithm. And if you look at the runtimes here, it is very intriguing that the runtimes of our uh, quantum differential private Lasso estimators does not depend on the uh, parameter space dimension D. And the main, uh, the, the main reason for that is that if you, if you are working on the uh, non-private lasso, you would have to compute every uh, alpha S, like every uh, basics uh, uh, and find the minima of that. So that's why you, you will always see a dimension D appears in the non-private lasso. However, in our content differential uh, private algorithms, uh, we, we, can, um, we can just using the same sampling strategies. So that would allow us to avoid the dimension in the parameter space. Um, and also notice that our, the, the utilities of our uh, quantum differential private uh, uh, algorithm is the same as the classical uh, differential private algorithm. So the, the utility is the same. However, the runtime is significantly improved. So additional key step in our uh, differential private algorithm is that instead of adding the Laplacian noise classically, we include them in the step preparation steps and so that we can just directly sampling um, uh, the, this register and, and, and get the desired result. And this step is efficient. Okay, so this is the, uh, uh, the conclusion of the first uh, part of the result. Now I'm going to move on to the second uh, part of the, uh, the result. So um, of course, mostly noise is harmful in your learning task. This is particular, particularly an issue in certain critical tasks where failure of the protocol or the algorithm results in significant consequence. Here, I give you two examples. The first one is in autonomous vehicle. The image sensor is supposed to output a stop a stop sign in the normal condition. However, however, the researchers has discovered specific noise, specific noise patterns to trick your neural network so that it would output a different traffic sign, in this case, a yield sign. The second example is in the cancer treatment. By adding adversarial noise, a benign nevus is misclassified as a malignant one. How to fool models by supplying deceptive input has now evolved into a subfield in machine learning called adversarial machine learning. Before I dive into the possibility of quantum adversarial learning, let me review the one content generalization of classical neural, neural network. Simil similar to the uh, classical neural network where the data were first passed through this feature ext extraction layer, followed by layers of neurons. The goal is to change the weight, like the uh, orange line here, linking to different neurons so that the cost function could be further minimized in each iteration. This commonly used strategy, the, uh, the, the commonly used strategies uh, for the uh, updating or bad propagation is based on gradient descent. Similarly, in quantum neural network, the classical network of neurons is re repressed by durable quantum circuit, where the angles of the rotation gate could be updated in each iteration to accomplish the uh, desired task. Since the measurement is performed in each iteration, the, the update process is purely classical. 
for example, we can directly use the, class, the classical gradient descent strategy in the quantum neural, neural network update uh, uh, process. We know classical neural network could be attacked by adversarial uh, noise. Could the same hold true in quantum neural network? Um, indeed, the same holds true in quantum machine learning as well. By carefully engineering the adversarial noise into the quantum input state, as shown in this uh, button figure, the quantum class classifiers based on quantum neural network will output the animal given even if the Im input image is a panda. This attack in quantum neural network was first proposed in this paper by Lu et al. And there are more examples uh, of attacks provided in this paper. Then, what should we do to defend machine learning tasks with adversarial input? The answer is also very easy to add noise. If you recall the mechanism of differential pri privacy, the strategy there is to include noise so that the algorithm could not distinguish the, change, the changes of the indices in, uh, in your data set. This in fact could be turned into the protection mechanism against the, uh, the adversarial noise. This has been explicitly done in this classical paper. Um, the reference is here. Uh, I think it was published in 2019. So it's a very recent paper. Now, let me define what the robustness means. We said an algorithm A possesses adversarial robustness of size tau d if the output of the algorithm it's the same, so for two different input rho and sigma, as long as the, these two input states are close enough under some distance measure tau. So the next question is, could noise be used to defend content adversarial learning? Could we do the same to defend the, the the, uh, the adversarial attack in quantum learning? The answer is of course, yes. So this is our second set of results. So without going too much detail of our result, what came out of it and could be easily explained is as follows. So our result basically shows that instead of noiseless circuit, if your learning circuit is noisy and obeyed a simple depolarizing noise model, like instead of the, uh, the, the circuit on the right hand side is, uh, is noise free, and uh, sorry, the, the circuit on the left hand side is noise free, and the circuit on the right hand side, the, the usual one, the practical one is, is normally noisy. And we model this uh, noise as the depolarizing noise. So this kind of like, uh, what is the color? This is the light orange colors. Um, and if you don't know what the depolarizing noise is, you can think of this as a quantum generalization of binary symmetric noise. Then we can prove that uh, under the classification task, the quantum classifier is adversarial robust under a certain degree of perturbation on the input state sigma. And of course that um, the, the amount of uh, robustness depends on how, how noisy your uh, circuits are and uh, or like how large this P1 up to PMs are. So that would affect the degree of robustness. Um, but basically the proof is through the differential private mechanism. So we can relate 
this P to the differential uh, budget and, and show that uh, and, and show that this indeed can provide us the uh, to defend the adversary uh, noise. And then as a byproduct of our, of our result, yeah, so we indeed we can con connect the depolarizing noise with the differential private privacy mechanism. So it turns out that this is a very easy way to, to add, uh, to provide uh, differential private mechanisms. Because implementing a depolarizing channel is very easy. Okay, so uh, here I will show you one numerical examples. And of course that in our paper, we have more uh, to demonstrate uh, our adversarial robustness in the practical environment. Here we choose the iris data set. The top left panel here uh, depicted our quantum classifier architectures based on quantum neural network. So these are, these are the rotation gate and this is the control knot. Uh, next, let's look at the bottom that panel. The orange and the red line shows the quantum classifier works properly when there is no noise in the quantum circuit. So you can see that the accuracy goes to one very quickly. Um, uh, but if, there, if the circuit is noisy, you can see that in these blue lines, the, the accuracy decreased quite significantly. Now um, let's look at the comparison between the, uh, the accuracy and the robustness measured using the AL2 norm. So uh, the, the vertical line is the accuracies and this is uh, this, uh, the horizontal line measures the uh, uh, robustness. So sorry, the, the horizontal line uh, indicated the amount of adversary noise. So the, the larger the, the noise are, the adversary noise are in our uh, numerical ex uh, experiment. And you can see that um, the gray lines, the gray line showed that without the depolarizing channel, the accuracy dropped very fast even with a small amount of adversary noise. However, the blue lines, the decrease in the, the decrease of the accuracy becomes slower. And it means that it can tolerate larger adversary noise. So this, this, is, uh, this provides a certain degree of justification of our result. Uh, and I think this is the final slide. Uh, thank you for your attention. Is that any questions? <laughs>